Okay, I'm going to start now. So, um, yeah, Flat Earth in logical form. I've added, uh, I've changed the names of two stars in the well known constellation. So, on 30th of December last week, I presented a critique of an argument pur purporting to prove that the Earth is not a globe. Um, and the argument was deliberately bad. Some people sadly did not spot this, but we discussed afterwards, and I think most people get it. I was presenting an argument and then pointing out, well, here are the bad things about it. There are also some challenges to my quote from Lukasiewicz, the Polish logician, um, and I'm going to cover that in the presentation, but essentially Lukas Lukasiewicz said, logic is not about thinking or thought, it's about how you express those thoughts and how we test the expression of those thoughts um, for a valid argument. Now, my argument was identified with no one in particular, but Bev of the Discord Next Level server, um, and also of the Try Thinking YouTube channel, complained I was misrepresenting his argument, so I was committing the straw man fallacy. Well, I wasn't aiming my argument at any particular group of people, I'm just saying, I was just saying, here is an argument which you try to prove that the Earth is not a globe, and here are the flaws in it. But then I asked Bev to present his argument in structured form, and we had a long conversation about that on his channel. Um, so read on. So Bev sent me this. It's a meme, as it's called. Um, and it's meant to prove the following. So it's not... It's meant to prove that all horizontals, whatever horizontals mean, are parallel to each other. It's, it's, it's a meme, so it's not exactly in structured form to start with. Um, but let's try and make some sense of it. So, a bit, uh, right, you see this sort of two teenage girls chatting. Um, just above there, there's a sort of an older looking, sort of um, academic looking um, document that says Proposition 9 Theorem. Bev later, he did a presentation last night, Bev later said that was from Euclid, but actually it's not really because uh, it's actually directly quoting John Playfair from his 1819 supplement to Euclid's Elements. You can see the title page of that book on the right. Playfair was famous for replacing Euclid's fifth, the famous fifth postulate with a different axiom. He didn't challenge the need for the fifth po postulate, um, but uh, we don't need to go into that anyway. If anyone wants to look at the Wikipedia entry for Playfair's axiom, you've got it there. Um, the point is, that quote you're seeing called Proposition 9 Theorem is actually not from Euclid. I'm not sure you could even find it in Euclid. Uh, Ev last night presented it as being propos Proposition 30 of Book 1 of Euclid's Elements, but um, that is a slightly different, that's a slightly different proposition. So, first point for logic, or rather for good, for good scholarship, if you're quoting something, make sure you're quoting from the thing you say you're quoting from. Right, there are some minor, there are some minor errors, not serious errors, but there are some minor errors in what he's got there. So first of all, a tri-bar sign, which is the three horizontal parallel lines, actually does not mean horizontal lines, although he says it does. Um, you can just see it. You see that picture one up from the, uh, from the bottom. Um, that does not mean horizontal lines, it's actually it's actually in logic. In logic, it means if and only if. So P, if and only if Q. Um, or in mathematics, it sometimes means identical to, or, or sometimes means equal by definition. Uh, the second point, which he's got completely wrong, is in Euclid, a line cannot be parallel to itself. Because what does parallel mean for Euclid? Um, it means two lines that never intersect at any point ever. Um, but, but obviously a straight line intersects itself at every point, so a straight line can never be parallel to itself. For Euclid, you could obviously redefine parallel if you want, but um, looking at Bev's presentation last night, he was clearly saying he got this from Euclid, which he clearly didn't. Uh, I've got the link to the video down there for those who are interested. But there's some far more serious errors in this meme than, uh, than that. Um, so let's... Let's quote Playfair, Playfair the, the bit that, the, that is actually quoted in that meme. It says, two straight lines, note the word straight lines, which are each of them parallel to the same straight line, 
not in the same plane with it, are parallel to one another. So that's a theorem. That's a theorem about straight lines, which are parallel to each other, and nothing else. Ev says, all horizontals are parallel to the plane of the horizon, note the word plane, and all horizontals are parallel to each other. Okay, spot the error. Um, well, actually two errors. First error is that, uh, again, he's not, he's not quoting what he's citing. He's citing what turns out to be Playfair, but what he's quoting is something quite different. Also, if horizontals means horizontal lines, that, that, that statement is false. Um, now, just think of this. We've got a straight line parallel to the plane of the horizon, and we've got another straight line also parallel to the plane of the horizon, and suppose both of those are in the same plane, and suppose one of them is pointing north-south, the other is pointing east-west, and those, clearly those horizontal lines, while parallel to the plane of the horizon, are not parallel to each other. They're actually crossing at some point. Any questions on that? Okay, I'll continue. Now, the charity principle in logic, or in scholarship generally, says if your opponent, the other side, appears to be making no sense whatsoever, then try and understand them, try and reinterpret what they appear to mean in a way that does make sense. It's widely used in scholarship, not always. Um, so, perhaps Bev means something else. Well, actually, he, he, he didn't mean something else, because I, I wrote this presentation a couple of days ago. Uh, Bev last night actually said he confirmed at some point in that presentation, to which you have the link, he actually meant lines. So he was saying horizontal lines that are parallel to the plane of the horizon, the plane of the horizon, um, must be parallel. That's, that's completely false. So um, charity principle doesn't always work when you apply it to flat earth. Okay, well, I'll try for a charitable interpretation. Don't want to be accused of a straw man, but the point is n none of what Bev said there and that meme made any sense at all. Uh, the only sense I can make of it is this. Uh, I interpret it as saying, if all planes are parallel to the same plane, and those planes are parallel to one another, and that's clearly true. But note, and here's another error in Bev's presentation, an if-then statement is not an argument. He clearly takes it to be an argument because he says, he said last night, well, you can express the argument either as an if-then statement or if as a P, therefore Q statement. But, well, you can't. It's a proposition. It's a material implication, um, whereas an argument consists of one or more propositions or premises plus exactly one conclusion. If P, then Q is a proposition, so not a premise or a conclusion, um, hence not an argument. The correct form, if he wants to present an argument at all, is if P then Q, that's your first premise, and P, second premise, therefore Q. So, so far I have reinterpreted Bev's argument in a way that now sort of makes sense. So the argument would be this, if all planes are parallel to the same plane, and they are parallel to one another. All horizontal planes are parallel to the plane of the horizon. Therefore, all horizontal planes are parallel to one another. Is that, is that argument valid? So now we come to Lukasiewicz, who I quoted in the presentation last week. Um, and this is really, really important. It's about, it's about Assessing an argument presented verbally for, for validity. You can't present a thought for validity because thoughts are psychological items, and thus we're clairvoyant. We don't know what another person's thoughts are. You can only assess a verbal expression of thought for validity. So Lukavia, Lukasiewicz says, there exists in logic a rule of inference called formally modus ponens, and, and still is called that. Um, According to that rule, if an implication of the form if A then B is asserted, and the antecedent, i.e. A, of this implication is asserted too, we are allowed to assert its consequent B. So, antecedent and consequent, these are logical terms inherited from the Latin, but it's, it's not rocket science. Antecedent simply means the term that goes before. Consequent simply means the term that goes after. So, it's another word. Antecedents, another word for the A as you see it, consequence, another word for B. 
He then says, in order to be able to apply this rule, we must know that the proposition A asserted separately, I, when you don't assert it as part of if A and, and then B, but we, if we assert it just as A on its own, we must know that that proposition expresses the same thought as the antecedent A of the implication, since only in this case are we allowed to perform the inference. We can state this only in the case where these two A's have the, exactly the same external form. Right, so we, we, we're not clairvoyant, assume that. We can't read minds. We don't know what, what the person expressing the argument means by A. Um, so we can only assess the argument for validity by um, grasping the thoughts expre as expressed by the two A's. And a necessary, although not a sufficient condition, for identifying the two thoughts is the external equality of their expressions. So fasten upon that last bit, external equality. So Bez's reinterpreted argument says, if all planes are parallel to the same plane, and they are parallel to one another, premise two is all horizontal planes are parallel to the plane of the horizon. Now, you can immediately see, and again, this is not rocket science, the two antecedents in those premises, in the, sorry, in the first premise, uh, do not have the same form at all, because the sequence of words parallel to the same plane is not the same as the sequence of the words parallel to the plane of the horizon. If you're going to do logic at all, guys, if you're going to do logic at all, do it properly and make sure that you have the same terms, that the same term occurs in the same way everywhere in the same argument. Don't keep changing the words. Now, um, they've claimed to me in conversation that um, there was, I think he conceded there was a fallacy in the, in the straw man argument I presented last week. But, um, but you see, Precisely the same, the, the same fallacy in, the, in, that, in that meme. It's the fallacy of equivocation. Uh, if plane A is parallel to the plane of the horizon, and plane B is parallel to the plane of the horizon, then the term the plane of the horizon must refer to the same object in each of the two cases. So we have to assume that they mean the same. I we need a further premise stating the sameness of reference. So just to understand that sort of that fallacy, suppose I say my office is on the first floor and you say that your office is on the first floor. Does it follow our offices are on the same floor? Well, I suppose in a sense, meaning they're both on the same floor. But if they're, this, if they're, this, if they're the first floor in different buildings, then they're clearly not the same floor in different buildings. So, and again, I presented this, this last week. Um, we have the fallacy of assuming the very thing that ought to be proved. The argument is valid if and only if the term the plane of the horizon refers to or means the same object in both occurrences. But it refers to the same thing if and only if there is just one plane of the horizon, hence it refers to the same thing only if the Earth is not a globe. But the argument is meant to prove that the Earth is not a globe. The proof that the Earth is not a globe depends on the assumption that the Earth is not a globe. Um, there was an amusing comment in the, in the discussion last night on Bev's channel. Um, they're saying that the globe argument is, if the Earth is a globe, then it's a globe. They're saying that's a ridiculous argument. Well, well, this is the same, and, and that's not what the globe argument is, actually. But uh, this argument here is clearly that if the Earth is not a globe, then the Earth is not a globe. Begging the question. There's actually another fallacy embedded in this. You, you, can, you can count up a few fallacies. I haven't given them all. It's called the fallacy of secundum quid et simpliciter, which is Latin for um, arguing for a, a proposition that is true in some qualified sense. Latin secundum quid, Greek pe, to a proposition that is true without qualification or absolutely true, simpliciter. Aristotle's sophistical refutations. This is where Aristotle lays out all the standard fallacies, which is still, which is still referred to today. Um, book 1, Chapter 4, Section 3. So, this, par this plane is parallel to the plane of the horizon in London. So you're qualifying it. It's the plane of the horizon in London. You cannot conclude from that that this plane is parallel to the plane of the horizon in any place. 
It may be parallel to the plane of the horizon in London. That does not mean it's parallel to the plane of the horizon in New York. Um, and there's yet another, yeah, I found this, um, this is a completely different sort of fallacy, but I found this in another of the Try Thinking presentations. Um, if the Earth is a sphere, P, premise, then the surface of liquid water at rest must curve, Q, consequent. A water level is a tool to establish a horizontal plane of reference. Now, the, the idea is here that um, the argument is aims, aims to establish a modus tollens, I, if you're given that if P, then Q, you can infer that not Q implies not P. The argument as it stands, again, violates the Lucasi of its principle. The Q in the consequent of the first premise, i.e. the surface of liquid water at rest must curve, is not the same as the negation of the second premise, because we're talking about water level being a tool. Uh, and a good test for validity here is just do words appear in one premise that don't appear in the other premise. Then you've got the um, fallacy of undistributed middle, as it's called. Um, the second premise is incorrectly stated, is also incorrectly stated. A water level establishes a local frame of reference, not a universal one. Hence, the argument also, as, 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 well, as, um, as well as being equivocal, it also violates the secundum quid, i.e. the ignoring qualifications fallacy. So, conclusion, um, I think this is a conclusion for Globus, really, because uh, to present an argument in structured form, you have to lay out stuff in, in an orderly way and you have to be patient about it. I, I've not seen anything in the flat earth, in the flat earth sphere uh, that suggests that anyone there is capable of listing out arguments patiently in a structured fo form. They, they rely on slogans, which like level is horizontal or prove a straight line, whatever that means. Uh, they rely on slogans, but they don't have the patience to present what is presented pictorial, pictorially or as a slogan, as a structured argument. And once you've done that, you need to check the argument for validity and soundness. A valid argument is one where the conclusion cannot be false with the premises true, i.e. where the conclusion follow, strictly follows from the premises. And a sound argument is one where all premises are true. You've got to do that or you have nothing. And you need also to check for the well-known well fallacies such as equivocation without qualification, begging the question, denying, denying the antecedent, asserting, affirming the consequent, and so forth. Well, that's it. That's my presentation. Um, next steps, if any. Um, well, there are two other arguments I think we need to be thinking about or, attack, or critiquing. Um, one which you see quite often is an angle is not useful information. Um, that's my polite interpretation. I think, I think the actual phrase is an angle tells you fuck all. Um, but yeah, an angle is not useful in information. You obtain only an angle from a sextant. Therefore, information obtained from a sextant is not useful information. Interesting argument. Uh, interesting to look at. There is also another one that you see frequently um, about, uh, around the word proof. So science does not give us proof. Some Globus say that. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but let's assume that's true. Logic and geometry give us proof, yeah, because Euclidean geometry is entirely logical. Therefore, logic and geometry are not part of science. Okay, well, that's not a valid argument to start with, and I need to understand that argument better, but there are two, there are two possible lines of critique for the sort of arguments the, that you commonly see. Um, and I'll just conclude by saying, well, number of flat earths are sort of wielding sort of logical tools or wielding the idea of logic uh, as though it's a gift to flat earth, but I'm, I hardly think so. <laughs>